Before we begin the measurement, let's briefly review the measurement concept. We will be going from one bank to the other, taking measurements along the way. We'll be dividing the entire measurement section into discrete sections, also called verticals, measuring the depth and the width of each vertical in order to calculate the cross-sectional area. And in each vertical, we'll be taking velocity measurements. We'll sum all of those verticals, and at the end of the measurement, we'll have one number. The exact equations used in the calculation will depend on what method your agency uses. For more information, consult the Flow Tracker 2 manual. Once I hit the measurement button, the first screen the Flow Tracker is going to show is a metadata screen. For example, uh, for the operator name, or the site name, or comments. If you haven't saved those in a template file already, you can key them in now. Uh, under comments, you can enter anything you like. Uh, you could enter in a starting gauge height, for example. Also, throughout the measurement, you'll have the option to enter gauge height data. And just uh, recognize that that's for informational purposes. It's nice to have, but it won't affect your ability to take a measurement, and it won't affect the quality of the measurement. So if you enter your metadata, um, let's hit next. And now uh, we have the option to add a station. The first station, station number one, is going to be our starting edge. Our starting edge in this case is at the right bank. It's at 22 feet. So I'm going to key in 22 on my screen, arrow down. And in this case, we actually have a depth at our starting edge. On the waiting rod, I see that our depth, according to the markings, is 0.9 feet. So I'm going to enter 0.9 and scroll down. The station type in this case is the right bank because it's on my right hand side if I were to be looking downstream. In this case we won't have a correction factor, it'll be one. And uh, I don't have any comments at this time, so I'll hit done. And uh, that's our first station. Easy. Now we're ready to take our second station with a velocity measurement. So I've moved along my tag line. My next station, I'm going to put it 21 feet. So I'm going to do 21. You'll notice it doesn't have to be increasing or decreasing. It could be either one. So I've incremented a foot. I've entered in 21. What is my depth at this location? I'm reading it off the rod. It looks like 1.14. I'm going to enter that in right now. Now we're in open water, so it defaulted to that for our station type. The water is shallow enough so I can take my velocity measurement in one point, uh, and we'll use the six tenths uh, location. If I were deeper, the flow tracker would actually detect that for me and prompt me um, if I wanted to use a 0.2 or a 0.8 method. In other words, two points per vertical. But I'm shallow enough for now. I'll just use a single point at 6 tenths depth from the surface. I'm going to keep scrolling down because I see that arrow. It's asking me what my correction factor is. I'll just leave it at 1. Do I have any comments? Not right now. All right. Uh, let's hit measure. Now here on the screen, uh, before we actually are collecting data for the measurement, we have a lot of good information that ensures we don't waste time collecting bad data. So on the left hand side, you'll see a picture of the waiting rod. Do we have our waiting rod set correctly for the depth? In this case, the flow tracker knows that my depth is 1.14. So I have a picture that I should line up the one with what would approximately be the 1.1414 line on the waiting rod handle. That's a probably about as good as I'm going to get it. Does that match what I'm seeing on the screen? I think so. So next on the screen we have that beam check. So with each measurement you can see are there weeds hung up? Is there something preventing my, my beam from looking normal? In this case, the beam check looks normal, the signal strength's normal, good. 
Uh, next we have the virtual bubble level. So am I holding the instrument level? It's green. Eh, got about a degree error. That's okay. And uh, what is my flow angle? It's just an arrow. You'll see it fluctuating depending on the flow. It's kind of slow here at the edge. So it's actually kind of normal to see that arrow fluctuate. Lastly, this is one thing the flow tracker doesn't know is, am I holding the probe in proper alignment to the tagline? So the probe should be uh, perpendicular to the tagline. And that transmitter, that circular transducer, should be pointed directly across to the opposite bank. That red band shows the direction uh, of the downstream arm. So make sure that red band is always pointed downstream if you want a positive velocity. So my screen parameters are showing up good. I have the flow tracker lined up properly, perpendicular with the tagline. I'm ready to hit start. Now the flow tracker will begin taking that 40 second or 60 second measurement as your organization requires. And what's nice is that I can view those data on the screen during this 40 second average. I can see a plot of the velocities in real time. I see that little blue arrow, so that means there's more for me to see. I can scroll down and see the SNRs, the signal strength. I can see the temperature, is it steady? I can see my tilt if I hold it, held it steady. Is the velocity angle shifting a lot? Uh, and battery voltage or back up to the top. I got a beep there and uh, I can review measurement parameters on the screen. If it looks normal to me, I'll hit the accept button. And that's our second measurement.